In this video, we are going to see the importance of people in a render and different methods to place them in Photoshop. Also, the process breakdown of this masterpiece. I mean, yeah, perfect. What is going on, fellas? I'm Geo, and this is Geo Creations. You can find me on Instagram as Geo Gerbin. As you guys asked, here is the video. Before getting into the topic, consider joining this small community by subscribing to the channel for new architecture content every Wednesdays. Alright, let's start with setting up the scene. This one is my recent academic project where I need to renovate a place in Chennai which once had a cultural importance and lost it eventually. So our aim is to make this place better, at the same time we need to reflect the culture and activities of this place. By creating a great ambience which boosts up the vibe and placing people that shows the activities happening in the area which makes a great recipe for a visual storytelling okay here we are in sketchup and this is our 3d model pretty basic but it's not how it looks when it's occupied by people right they'll implement their own designs like this uh, which we can use it as a leading lines for our composition these lines will drive the viewers eyes to our subject and of course some typical greens and now it's time to render this I'm using Lumion here, as the learning curve of Lumion is not too steep and because of the rendering time, people tend to mindlessly take a bunch of renders like this. And for the love of god, please don't use these 3D people. Actually Lumion is pretty impressive because of this wide variety of environmental effects and its massive material library. But these things are not up to standards. If you are okay with it, just go for it. I'm not judging but I won't recommend to do so. By the way, what do you think of it? Feel free to leave your opinions in the comments below. And you may ask why did I make a perfect model then? where there is plenty of details to show, sections, elevations, exploded view and a bunch of other detailed drawing only with this 3D model. I have talked about this in detail in my last video. Check it out after watching this video, the links in the description. Composition really matters while setting the view. I'm thinking of taking out a square render but unfortunately we only have 16 is to 9 frame in Lumia. So I'm bringing the subject at the center. So that'll get enough room to crop and play around in Photoshop. You can find more about composing your image by watching this video. The link's in the description. Alright, let's set the ambience first. Assume it's an evening. Now we need to set the materials. Most of the materials are already set. So we just need to tweak the settings a little bit. You can check this video for more details on that. Now time to place people. Meeting. Wait, what? Please don't use these 3D people. Let me explain. While placing people, it's essential to consider the lighting and shadows. With these models as references, we can easily achieve that in Photoshop. Let's place all the people in one layer. To do that, select one of them and from this menu, click on select objects of similar category and move them on to a new layer. Now in the photo mode, click on the FX panel, you can find layer visibility under the objects tab. Ok now we can turn off the people layer in this scene. Now with this selector, capture another scene. Now copy all the settings. To do that, go to menu, edit and select copy effects. Now you just need to paste them on the next scene. Now turn the people layer back on. Take out these renders with the alpha channel in case you need to change the sky in post processing and the material id in case we need to change the materials. I also took another render without the foreground element. Now bring all of them inside photoshop. 
I'm reducing the opacity of the foreground objects a little bit. I'm merging both of them as a small object. Keep the people layer at the top for references. Let's start with replacing the sky. With alpha channel, we can select all the whites at once and mask it out from our main layer. Now select a suitable sky and tweak the color and contrast by using hue saturation and levels adjustment layer. Ctrl plus U for adjusting the colors and Ctrl plus I for adjusting the levels. And now the main part, placing people. Here each one of them tell a different story. The costume of the main subjects are regional to affirm the geographical location of the site. These people are there to tell that here's an area for the market and grocery shopping. And these people are sitting here to inform its usage which is obviously sitting. This person is taking a glance on some artwork and this one over here is having a view on the temple pond nearby. And here's a child to show that this place is family friendly. These people are actually from random google images. Even though it's time consuming to get the right one, it's worth it at the end of the day. how to get the proper lighting for this subject. Let's turn on our reference. Here you can see where the lighting is coming from and where it is falling. Let's turn it off for now. I'm placing the subject abiding the 3 by 4 rule. Let's create a new layer on top of it and create a clipping mask by pressing Ctrl plus Alt plus G so that whatever we do stays inside the bottom layer. Now take a big soft round brush, reduce the flow and start painting on the highlight. To remove it from the shadows, click on the layers thumbnail. The layer style dialog box will open. Now remove the shadow from the underlying layer. Press Alt to split it so that you can get a smoother transition. We can also do the same for shadows with a black color. We won't need that in this case. Also you can create another layer for creating even more accurate results by changing the intensity on certain areas. And to give a sense of motion, I'm giving a motion blur for this subject. To do that, go to filter blur motion blur. Choose the angle in accordance with the direction of your subject. Control the intensity of the blur using the distance slider. Hit OK when you are satisfied. I advise to keep this layer as a smart object so that you can edit all the effects later by just double clicking on these sub layers. Follow the same steps for the other elements. And last but not least, the color correction and the effects part. Create a stamp visible layer by pressing Ctrl Alt plus E. Make it as a small object and press Ctrl Shift plus A to open Adobe Camera Raw Filter. Adjust the basic settings. ok when you are satisfied. And as usual, I'll apply a preset. Copy the same layer and apply the preset. Here I am using a custom preset. Reduce the opacity to control the effect of the preset. If you have used any different techniques or if you have great ideas on presenting stuff, feel free to post it on Instagram by tagging me. I'll be happy to feature you. And if you have any suggestions or questions, comment section is open for you. Make sure to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe so that you can be a part of this community. Signing out for now, catch you guys in the next video. See ya.